I did you see that? So, they're speaking yeah. about two <laughs> vaccinations. More than that, I yeah. Four, five. Crazy. Uh, like <laughs> shit pumped into them. Plus, the scientists have said you're not to do it. And and some of these um, recent approved drugs aren't even. Um, tested on animals yeah yeah they haven't done any of the sort of years of due diligence that's been done in the past it's oh man it's crazy the, the only the only thing that keeps popping into my head is when are we gonna fucking remove the bastards do you know what I mean but then every there's a plan there's a plan I I uh, watched a, a video recently and it was um, in the emergency room it was basically a, a staff member had um, recorded her colleague after they had been administered the vaccination. And the thing that I was watching occur was this guy going through a herx, um, basically a psychite uh, shock, uh, shock. And um, he was sitting there shaking both arms, basically jolting. And then you'd hear the lady sh saying to him, breathe. And um, he was basically in such a, a state that he would forget to breathe. It was, it was devastating the to jam? watch the video. I think it was on Max Egan's channel on the, the Crow House. Is um, that the jab? Oh yeah, yeah, they got the jab. And this was yeah. the frontline it's workers. It's a form of AIDS. Yeah, yeah. It it's totally like a, just a, attacked his nerve system. You can see yeah, it. It's, yeah. it's, a ra it's a rapidly acting form of AIDS. It's a speeded up form of AIDS. That's similar to what uh, I think it was Murkovich was suggesting from um, her works. Well, there was uh, there's a guy on YouTube called the Swedish guy Swedes, saying Swedes for sanity or something, and he mentioned months back last year um, that it was when they were testing the vaccine on people that people because they actually put he actually said that they put him um, HIV in it. Wow. A type of HIV into the fucking vaccine, mixing it up. And people, certain people are getting fucking HIV from it, but it's a, it's a speeded up form of HIV. Crazy. Where it doesn't take years to kill you, or or may, it might not kill you, but it'll f*** you up, basically. Yeah. Like motor neuron disease. Uh, it, it was clearly yeah, but, something that was um, attacking this guy, and, and you, you could hear the fear... And the colleagues that was around him and i mean it, these things are going viral and the, the, the only people that are not actually talking about the vital aspects of it is bloody bbc and all the other three letter twats you know it's it's you stupid. know what the, the, i was saying this i think in my my last in, interview with um um Tiglo, that uh, there was neighbors outside and they were talking about all this stuff, like it was common, but they were from either side of the street shouting at each other. They were avoiding each other for the COVID mm. distancing. And I'm yeah. standing observing it in inner hysterics, looking at them going, these are people exhaling the truth, so much so that even I could hear it 100 metres away. And it was just astonishing to, to see. And, you know, I... I it's exciting times to know that people on the ground level are actually awakening to the, the, the truths. But then on the other coin, you hear the individuals that are so fearful that, that, that they can't even exit their house and they haven't even seen family for more than 12 months. Yeah. Well, um, a neighbour across the road from me, he's red-pilled himself and he's obviously getting his missus on board. <laughs> and I talk to him and he's just like, the, the the point he always gets across to me is how fucking nuts it is that people, the way people are behaving, like he says, like you can't even have your own opinion. Yes. He said they they don't want to know and and this and that, but then they want to tell you they don't want to know what you got to say about it, negative or positive, whatever they they might view what you're saying. But the, on the other hand, then they want to bombard you with all the bullshit that they've heard. So one minute they're angry at you for speaking your mind, and then the next minute they fucking regurgitate the bo bollocks they've heard on the news and expect you to believe it. <laughs> and when you don't believe it or disagree or, or well, will agree to disagree, then they don't want to be your friend or your family member anymore. And it's like... And I'm like, yeah, I know, mate. <laughs> <laughs>
I have seen an a, a, a increase in the young being more awake to all of it. Um, oh, yeah, be because it, depending on... Um, well, they're more influenced with computers and stuff, aren't they? Visual. Whereas we're not so... Where we weren't so visual growing up. You know what I mean? It's certainly interesting. And, and I... I, I um... It, it, it makes me think about the long term aspects, you know, the, the, this century, for an ex uh, example. The, the, they're going to get bored to the point where they are old and bored. And as they get to o over this next century, if, if there's people like ourselves not actually making something useful, manifesting, you know, like this book, the movie we've spoke about, and so on and so forth, if there's not none of that, then they're going to get to a point where they just actually switch off as they progress in life instead of capitalizing on the early awakening that they may not even be a realization that they are in. Yeah. That, that was one of my thoughts across my mind this year, the, the, the tail end of last year. And I do, I, th I, I think, and I was saying this with um, Tiglo on the, the, the interview. I, I, I do feel that we, it's our time to be doing things to help this next century. And, you know, the, the, there's that uh, Klaus guy, me and you have spoken about, that, that wrote the, the Fifth Industrial Revolution. Well, that's their wish list. And really, it's a conspiracist's book. I mean, if you just take time to read the damn book, and I, not, not yeah. you, but the audience, um, you, you discover that, it's all the conspiracies from the New World Order and the occults and everything that they've spoke about for years. And it's, it's pretty much a madman's book. So, so I, I, I think to myself, that's not what this century is. And it certainly isn't what the energies are being pushed out. I mean, um, I, I, to my today's video, the, the 4th of February, that I've um, snipped a bit of Michelle Knight and she's speaking about this year, this whole month. And the energies that's coming forth and one example that she gives in her video is that company the game spot how that everybody was banking on it and it's went the other way it's 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 flipped so all these rich people have, have been given some exuberant amount of money and the whole world is going you thieves and they recognize yeah. it so it's going to get to a point where their their wish list that that guy's book i just mentioned um fifth industrial revolution the, the Grand Reset, I think, is the actual title of the book. But yeah. um, th th that book will not happen. I think it will be put in the back burner and probably disappear into the background in a few years. And I, and I do believe this, this century will go so humble, so divine, that um, those that want that Industrial Revolution will be so frustrated that they never got it and yeah. hopefully go to the grave and vanish consciously uh, into the darkness you know it could, it could only do this earth a favor if if and even those that speak about the overpopulation issue and, and how that they perceive that as an issue i think that their consciousness is going to disappear for thousands of years now it's it's their turn to disappear to the darkness and, and that's what we're in right now and that's the energy i'm feeling it really is exciting it's been a whole buzz for me this year <laughs> Uh, the, the, the book itself, it's, it's came a long way. I, I, I think it's helped me express myself differently as well. Yeah. It's interesting. Hoping I can make uh, uh, it available very soon. That's my hope. I shared pieces out to some people and read a few parts. A good bit of feedback. No, that's good. Well, where you on? Where you talk? Where you say about um, that they're gonna lose their fucking like consciousness? They people have already said this is the whole point of the fucking vaccine, ain't it? As well, yes, is to either kill people off or make them fucking drones. Yeah, Tom, Tom. Just do, yeah, just do as you're fucking told. Yeah, and they they'll have no. Like, uh, what's the word? No perception of the danger or no perception of the bullshit. Yeah. Reminds me of the uh, Steiner works, and, and this I've put in the book, but it reminds me of Ru Rudolf Steiner speaking about the Armin um, consciousness, the future, 
and this was back in the 1915s all the way to the 1918s but he he, he spoke of Armin and to simplify it it is the technocratic consciousness and uh, he described it as it was a consciousness in the waiting it played the long game for evolutionary process and, and this consciousness that will come forth will try and manifest itself in an incarnation and I found it really interesting and I think um, as I've grown into Steiner's works and compared to many others I suspect that some people even thought that he was referring to Armin as it would be the devil or Satan himself trying to incarnate but I do not think that I've come to conclude that it's a state of consciousness that we're speaking about and it's a state of which could have super ramifications on earth scary ones and, yeah. um, I think we've gone through that I think that was the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, all the way. And I think we are here, 2020 uh, century. I think that is probably the potential conclusion for this incarnation attempt. And one of the thoughts that I had was, could it be an artificial intelligent incarnation? And then um, I spent, you know, you know how uh, technical minded I am with computers. So I spent a lot of time discovering what the artificial intelligence is. And then just to simplify it and, and to, to me and you for this conversation, it's, it is an algorithmic uh, aspect. So if you think of the game oh, yeah. tic-tac-toe, the algorithm is simply tic-tac-toe, never ending question, never en en ending answer. It can never <laughs> conclude. It can only hypothesize of what the conclusion can be. So it's not truly actually artificial. It's not... Um, like data from Star Trek, or they allude to that to be, you know, it's it's nothing close to that. It's simply something running a pattern, looking at patterns. Pish. Well, that's, what, that's what we all do anyway. It is is so so technically, it's not even really alive. It's 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 not even its own self. And I, yeah, it's like it's like when you say to somebody, "How do you remember a smell?" <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you smell something and you smell it again, maybe not for 20 years, but you'll recognize it and you'll go, do you know what? That's fucking, I don't know, oil. That, that yeah. reminds me of something I've said my whole life, you know. Um, every time I've smelt horse dung, I've said, gosh, can you smell, smell that roses? And it's referring to people nicking the dung for their roses. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, this is, this is it. And, and when you listen, I think it, it might have been that Bruce Lipton, the men who talked about, he says, that a smell is a coded program. Yes. And when we smell it, the brain decodes it and memorizes it for next time. Ah, it's amazing. Like... Yeah. Yeah, it's mad. Oh, what a day, though, eh? Have you got snow down your way? No. We got Rain. snow up here today. We're meant to have snow next week. Ah, oh, that's good. Now, as long as I get some sunshine, I'll be happy. I think the north gets it for the for the next three or four days, something like that. And I think the south gets it then for a few days. Yeah. Thanks, Raytheon. We really appreciate the manipulations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, just how many people are actually awake to that? It makes me laugh, you know. Yeah. I've been I just sent you a. Go on. I just sent you that video of that song. Oh, hi, hi. I'll give it a play later. It might be. Uh, I don't know if you can get away with it, but it might be a good intro. Oh, for 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 our videos, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I don't know because some people have things on uh, copyright, and other people have yeah. it on common license. Yeah, yeah. It's one that, of the things I'm like trying that. to do is just leave all my stuff on common license. I'm, I'm, I'm not. Well, it's an old. It's, a, it's an old song. Yeah. If it's 25 years old, I think we can. Oh, it's more than 25, mate. Yeah, it's probably. It's got to be 60s, 70s. Yeah. Maybe even, yes, I reckon 60s, I reckon. Scootube doesn't like uh, any reuse of someone else's tunes. It's, uh... Well, it looks like this person's done it. Yeah, yeah, well, it could be. Could, could be one of them you're allowed. I'll, I'll give it a yeah, play and I, find out. You'll like it. I come across it by accident, I did, and I was just like, wow, how fucking hit the nail on the head with this video and song. Huh. Yeah. 
Obviously, it's a lot more complicated than just fucking listening to a song and watching a video, like, but it does give you a taste of. They fucking had a good idea of what was gonna things shit was gonna be like. I kind of back then. I kind of help but sit in the state of bemusement and amazement to all of all of these things. You know, I I often find that the oneness consciousness is feeding so much to us, and when people start to see it, they they they're like, "Wow, I just got this," and you're like, "Yeah, but it's been there for like a hundred years." <laughs> yeah. That's my old. That's what my old man used to say to me. I used to come home from school sometimes and thought I learned something new, and I'd say something to my old man. My old man's like, "Silly, don't be silly." I was learning that when I was in school. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like um, pig, uh, pig Latin. Aye. We like talk silly. Yep. Um, I come home the one day. Oh, Dad, look what I can do. do, 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 do. And my old man looked at me. He went, "That's rubbish." Yeah. I went, what? You were, and he spoke it fluently. I couldn't even under-fucking stand him. <laughs> aye, aye, like, ooh, you are a stupid Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The days, man. Oh, That's... um, before I forget, when you mentioned something just now about computers, uh -huh. have you listened to a guy called Al Beak? That rings a bell for some reason. Tell me a little bit more. He, he was on the, um, uh, what was it called? The... Philadelphia experiment. Oh, with the ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and his, him and his brother was on was the I ship. I was just the way to say, is that the guy that jumped in the water? Yes. Yeah. And he went into the future. Yeah. And he explains about when he's in like a few hundred years into the future, he said that he was in this fucking super technological city. They even made a movie with... about that. Yeah. Yeah. And he said that this is his interview. I watched this fucking hours long. Um. And he talks about how he was in this space age city and nobody lived outside the cities. And you used to be able to take fucking tall rides to the old cities. Like just for like historical fucking look at the way they used to live <laughs> sort yeah. of thing. Um, and he said he was there for a, a while and he was asking questions. And like, how the hell does everything work? What's, who's running the place? What, you know, what, <laughs> you know, I'm from the fucking fucking 400 years ago like you know oh, yeah. so they said to him eventually once people got to know him and stuff and he done a few jobs or whatever he was doing there helping out he got to he got took to the machine so he could get some answers well he, he said he had to be put into a radioactive into like a a secure suit because obviously the radiation of the machine then you go in and, and basically it was a it was a crystal Crystal, you know, like in Star Trek, the crystalline ent uh, entity. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that episode that of was the Next computer. Generation. <laughs> yeah, that was the computer. Wow, eh? And, and crystal and he actually is used in computers e e even yeah. now. I mean... It, well, it's, it's silicon. Yeah, I was just the way to go there. <laughs> uh, and that, that's obviously a very rudimentary aspect of computing if you think about how that consciousness yeah. is being portrayed by that guy, you know, an entity. It's like well, it, what we're talking about, about the Armin entity, the actual consciousness. Yeah. And this is why I was thinking about, and, 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 and I injected it in the book, because I do believe we're on the brink of the potential true artificial consciousness that, that, that they want. And it's not that it's a scary thing, it perhaps is, I don't know. I'm not applying emotions to that type of thing, but I think we are so far off of it that it's going to be something when we're all grey and old, you know. It's an, uh, I, I, oh, I do yeah. think we're going to be looking at this point in time then going, that was it, I knew it, I told you. <laughs> yeah, but I think we're going to have to live through something like Judge Dread period. Well, I think that's what comes out after, and I suspect as we get nearer to it, and, um, you know, David Icke, he speaks about the Hunger Games aspect, and I don't think yeah. that's the way it's going. I, I, I really do not. Even though the, the, the book we mentioned, The Grand Reset, that is what they want. They want the Mad Max scenarios. And personally, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I, I think those dumb consciousness uh, beings that are just looking at the lower planes only, they'll vanish into the depth of the darkness and they'll have to wait a full cycle before we ever see their type of consciousness on this plane again. I do believe we are needing the divine times. 
So I think as we hear of all the nasty stuff, we'll actually see the opposite manifest. And it'll be like all the gypes that, that wanted the crap will be like, what? What's going on? And they'll end up just shriveling up old and flipping off. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think I think that they they've got the ability to li literally like when someone's borderline dying, <clears throat> you know, their their heart or their lungs or their internal organs is failing, but their brain is good. I honestly generally think that they can actually take your fucking brain out. For sure. And stick it in a fucking jar with fucking things giving it oxygen and circulating and cleaning the blood and all that stuff. And they've lit linked fucking and they're using brains for memory. For sure. I, I, for storage. I, I mean, there was movies in the 80s speaking about that. I mean, wasn't it um, the guy with the white hair, Martin? Steve Martin. Wasn't it him that did a, a movie about uh, removing brains and it was like a spoofy type comedy? Yeah. It, was, it was quite hilarious. I mean, if we look through all the sci-fi aspects of the Holly Rood or Hollywood stick, you know, the, the, the magic stick, then we can actually see that a lot of this has been portrayed. And I do suspect that there's been a lot of um, mind um, study. And one of the things that struck me was Obama's term. He was spending a lot of money towards brain development, studying of brains, and then us as a gamer society, we've seen um, Oculus Rift and the um, headsets that would attach onto the brain. Well, they're actually pr producing a frequency into one's mind and no one even yeah. gra grasps the uh, conscious implications of such things. But um, I, I, I feel that these were all beginnings for this Armin. And it was like testing how an artificial could connect in, in the sense and then um, the, the, the brain, like you're saying, put a head in a jar. I think they've done it digitally already. And I think they're so close to doing it to the next scale. It could be interesting. And, well, um, do you know what? That's just Simpsons. It is. It is. And, and one of the interesting thoughts, and um, me and you and a few others in the community, we've spoke about cryptocurrencies for a long time. So the, the, the aspects of cryptocurrency, the architecture behind it, is a, is a torrent field. It's a linking chain port to port place to place as a single entity so hypothetically it is a vast amount of power obtainable for one entity mm. and that's just even more mind-blowing and i give an example like you were talking about just say all the humans linked up their brains to this single entity would the entity not be even all those brains <laughs> Well, and then that connects back to Obama's work, you know, and, and then Obama, before he left his term, just finishing up for you, um, Obama, before he's left his term, he released the classified documentation about all those psychic stuff. And it was the Stargate project, the Ingo Swan stuff, remote viewing. So I thought that was a whole level of mind stuff for Obama's terms. It's crazy. Yeah, it was I, funny enough. I was saying something like that um, the other week. To, a, to my mate who I got my weed off of, I said to him, I said, look, I said, because he was on about, he goes on about alien stuff and, and this and that, and I said, look, I said, how, how, like, the time, the time, like, we were talking about the time before, like, we're meant to be in 2012, say, because they've changed the dates, then, but, if that's right, why are we, then we, we like, you were saying, and I watched your video where you were saying you feel younger, because you had your birthday, mm. but you obviously you're older, but you, you feel younger. But that, and that's what I was thinking. I was thinking, well, the only reason we're fucking aging is the as quick as we are is because we think we are. Yes, yes. And they, and and because it's been done over such a long period, everybody thinks that that way, so it becomes that fucking way. Yeah, it's because and, people and I, are, I, are in the linear mindset. They're, yeah, they're... and I and my mate was kind of looking at me puzzled, and I said, just like this, I said. One day, a guy said, I'm going to have a cat without a fucking horse. It's going to move around like it had one. Yeah. It didn't exist, but because he fucking thought of it, it eventually it became a fucking thing. Yeah. So, that who says we're not doing it without even knowing it? All the time. All the time. Which, which and, and to tap on something that I was speaking about in, in uh, Tiglo's video, 
um, that epiphany project that we hosted. I mean, we had a few hundred people come in to this um, seminar that we were hosting, and we, we hosted a couple of rounds of the same thing. And it was in simplicity, sharing an obstacle. And our obstacle was the fact that ScreedTube would shadow ban people, prevent people getting notifications and various different issues. And we openly discussed what was needed as a manifestation for the world. And in that project, we had uh, a radio host, we had community managers, Discord users, um, YouTube users, and so on and so forth. There was heaps of people. And from the project, the aim was to manifest something like another platform. And I'll throw some names out there, like BitChute, AltTube, and so forth, so on. And um, for me and the people that hosted the project, we didn't assume that we would be running the platforms and we didn't assume that we would make any revenue. We simply believed that the people there would be enough to manifest it consciously. And here was me and Tiglo just sharing that discussion because we both felt that the manifestation occurred. We're looking around the world going, there's AltTube, there's BitChute, did we do that? <laughs> So there is conscious implications to all these things. Well, I mean, even when you look through um, all through history, I mean, the majority of people that say they invented something didn't. They actually just stole other people's ideas and figured I, it out. It, it reminds me of Einstein. When Einstein is questioned by a reporter, how does it feel to be a genius? Ask Tesla. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and that wasn't reported, funny enough, was it really? I know. Well, it wasn't made knowledge. Crazy, man. It, 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 one of the other things I noticed in speaking about inventions that you're tapping on there, there, the, the, there is a synchronicity across the earth. And I think it was Graham Hancock that was speaking about this and the fact that there's inventors that invented something in America and in the same week in, say, Germany, they're applying for the same patent. It's as if two conscious beings was in string theory connecting and they've come up with their same piece and at the same time done acts in the realm which connect and you know he was speaking of the signals i'm sure it's the hancock guy it could have been ellie marzuli actually the more i think about it it might have been both of them well talking about that pattern you're on about um when uh princess diana died I can't remember what it was I was watching, whether it was a documentary or something. I watched it years ago. All for Synchronicity Discord, configured for the community as an interaction hub, created to allow users to receive notifications from YouTube video uploads as a prevention from the Screw YouTube's shadow bans. Furthermore, it has other interactions such as community members interacting, posting videos with each other. For users that's new to offer synchronicity Discord, you can allocate a role by clicking one of these emojis at the bottom here. There is instructions in the welcome channel for anyone joining. And once you've done this, you'll gain access to synchronous member channels where you can meet other members and see their interactions on a daily basis. Discord provides users with voice channels which allow other members to connect with each other and interact on a voice basis. You can even share content such as screens and many other features. All members are welcome. If you wish to join Discord or All for Synchronicity Discord, click the link in the description below. Um, and I think it was on telly even. I don't even think it was on the internet because I, I, I've only had the internet the past like six, seven years. Um, that this gentleman was talking about in America, they've got they, they've basically they've wired up the planet so they can read the mood of people. So there's a guy who sits in a room, watches a computer, and sees the readout on there. And when Princess Diana was announced that she died, um, the computer obviously picked it up, and the guy was like what the fuck is going on? Something, something's happened and the whole world's affected by it. And he went out, asked the question, what's going on? Oh, Princess Diana's just died in a car crash, blah, blah, blah. Like, and that was back in 1997. And he was like, oh, that explains why the computer's fucking going off the, you know, 
playing up. Then when two f when the Twin Towers was done. Well, this is that emotional sensor of sorts. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, fi I find it really interesting, the, the, that thing you're talking about there. And if we go back to um, the 1800s in history, there was a lot of psychics, mediums, that would speak about the ether. And specifically, they would call it the ether as if it was a field of unseen energies that was continually tappable. And, you know, as I've grown older, I call it the Akashic or, or the oneness, the bliss. But um, continuing what I'm saying here, this ether, I find it interesting how that in the 90s, when um, computers came through its progression, that they would call the connecting piece an ether, and to give you it in its full title, an ether card or an ethernet network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So technically... Is it the same ether that they spoke about from the psychic medium era? You know, where, where people were kinetically energized and so forth, so on, the, the, the Steiner era? Well, they knew that anyway. Yes. and, and Remember when was, you, you yeah, shared well, me the time traveling interview? Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the guy. Well, he even speaks about that. He says everything, every radio transmission, every video, every TV broadcast that has ever been made is still there perfectly to be just tuned into. Yeah, on its own feet. Yeah, yeah, it's just there, constantly running. Much like, better. energy never dies. And he, he, he basically, that's what he was saying, energy doesn't die, it's a con continuous, and they've just come out and said that, what, in the past three years, because they looked at the black hole, and they've seen light go in and light come out, so they were like, oh, energy never dies. All in my book, man. And specifically in the oneness state, I, I oh man, I, I can't wait to get it done. Can't wait to get it out to people and, and get people talking about it. But um, yeah, I, I specifically tap on to where this Akashic is and, and the oneness state. And if you just consider that, how would we hold a memory that was untouchable? And um, in the book, I, I, I express how I've come to these thoughts. And when you think about how we would have to be out of time, so not in time space linearly, then that would be a state of which would be untouchable, an unchangeable state, which things would extend from, come out of, but yet never return to you and potentially return to you. So it's a, a truly an interesting thing. And uh, I, I, I think the ether aspect, the synchronicity from technology is all Armin. It's all connecting to an evolutionary phase which we all need to go through. So the, the, this Armin fear technocrat thing that we was mentioning earlier in the, the, the recording, um, I don't think it's really something to be feared about. And I don't think Steiner meant it as fear. I think he wanted people just to be aware of what could come. And this would allow us to break free. Well, yeah, it's a warning, ain't it? I do. I feel it as the true warning. And, and even as, as in the 1800s when radio and radar occurred, he said it was going to be so much harder for us to be spiritual. So I, I think the vast life experience I've had getting here, um, I think it's going to be even harder for those in, in future. But ho hopefully we can leave some solid tools for these people and the, and, and the next generations to, to, to grasp. And Specifically, I'm targeting, you know, like my niece generation down there in the sevens or fives, and hopefully, as they come up, they're they're questioning things beyond how we questioned it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, funny enough, yesterday I, I mentioned, I said I spoke to my neighbour across the road. He messaged me, and um, I looked at the link he sent, and I messaged him back, and I said to him, I said, "Well, I said this is why my grandfather, who raised me, always said." Be your own person, think for yourself, and don't follow others. It's the only that's, way to walk the path. Yeah, and that's and I'm so thankful he like and then I said I said to my neighbour, I said, I owe him a hell of a lot. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Even though he passed away years ago. But I owe him so much. Because even like looking at the, the time scale from like when my grandfather was born in nineteen forty three and what he was taught compared to me coming to my his grandkid to what I was being taught was completely fucking like opposite ends of the scale, near enough. Yeah, completely opposite. Because my, my, my grandfather used to say to me, what the hell is that school teaching you? Yeah. 
because I used to come home and say things like, what's pie? And I was in, like, started high school. I should have known. Like, my grandfather was like, I was taught pie years ago, you know, when I was a lot younger than you are. Why ain't you being taught properly? Yeah. And he, and he actually explained things to me. And I was like, right, okay. It's like with um, Welsh history and King Arthur. My grandfather was taught in school that King Arthur was real, not a legend, this, this, and that. They were actually taught it. And then you go 50, 60 years on, and there's... Well, they're only just, yeah. yeah, it's... it's, it's and I, and I have a feeling that that was part of the occult schools being manipulated. And uh, in my book, I cover a little bit about the dark state of consciousness. And I do think that we've been going through an ignorance cycle. And I, I, I even suspect that the likes of, say, your grandfather, he would have been one of them that walked the narrow path through the ignorant period. So the wisdoms that was there were truly hand down things. And for me and you, you know, we're getting closer, and this is just my interpretation, I, I think we're getting closer to the the touch of the Enlightenment. You know, I, I would have even said that the Grand Conjuncture was the touch, but I'm not 100% sure, because I know there's other, other interesting uh, um, cycles coming, other points through this next phase, all the way up till 2023. But um, I think this little period of time is a pause in the sense that the darkness is getting pushed one way and the light's getting pushed another, and I'm, I'm, I know I'm using two um, contexts there, but I, I do feel that we are coming to that great point where everybody goes, holy schmuck, the divine's in all things. And I, 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 I don't think it's going to be um, negative how some people want it. And I'm, I'm, I'm so excited for it, man. It's just been... This this whole year's felt like a right crazy buzz. <laughs> well, where you were um, talking about um, the energies, the fields and stuff, um, plasma came to mind. It's funny you saying that. Um, T. Glow said plasma on the, the our discussion. She was speaking yeah, about, somebody said something about plasma time travel. <laughs> well, in Europe, next to the CERN Collider, they're building something called ITER, I-T-E-R. And it's basically the equivalent of a 40-story building in the ground that's going to be built as a gravitational um, magnetic battery. Wow. Because basically, when the way it was explained was... When, when they're going to use the CERN Collider to draw plasma out of the universe. But the problem with plasma is, it's like in our, in our universe, you put a, light, a flame to a piece of wood and it takes time to, to light and do what it needs to do to have a reaction. Whereas when plasma is drawn into this um, plane realm, yeah. that it's, it's, like, uh, it's like an explosion. So yes. the only way to contain it is by spinning it inside a, a battery, a magnetic field battery. Like, um, I can't explain it. Do you know, like when you cut an apple in half? That's so interesting. You've got the center core, which is pushing outward, and you've got the outer core, which is pushing inward. You, you know, you're but making me think of a toroidal field, which is in the book. Yeah. And you, yeah, you're even just, made, making me think of Tesla's yeah. little diagram. Yeah, it's all it's all the same. This is how they're fucking doing it. This is wow. where they got the, the knowledge from, you see. Is that not another interesting synchronicity considering the, the age of Tesla? <laughs> yeah. But the problem is, if if one of those magnetic plates inside that, that battery fail, it only would take one teardrop of plasma to explode and it would be felt halfway around the world. I wonder if that's the same as what Tesla's device. Remember his his, which they try and tell you is the oscillation device, but it's it's yeah, something well, a bit more. What, what Tesla, I think, what Tesla said is basically he could have used the old plant, the whole planet as a weapon. Yeah. So he could have just knocked any any meteor heading for us out of the fucking way. Mm -hmm. Basically, he would have used the planet, got the right oscillation, the right frequency, fired the plasma beam straight at it, and annihilated it. That's probably actually the, the, the attempts of the death ray. And then if we go back to 2000, I think it was 19 or 18, there's a place in America they actually went and rebuilt the um, Wardenclyffe Tower. 
Um, so there's yeah. Tesla getting remade. And I know yeah, and there's took- one in England as well, which is not actually public information or well-told information. There, there, there has been video footage of it. And that's on the west coast of, of England. And I think that is the link which Tesla probably spoke about in his time. Mm. It's interesting. Yeah, and, and another thing, right? Do you know when um, I was you sh- back a couple of years ago when you showed me that time traveling interview? Yeah, yeah. With the American and the Scottish guy interviewing him, right? Yes. He showed. He shows Big Apple picture. Airport. I know the one. Yeah, but he shows a picture of the building with the time machine in it that they built. Yes. Right? Now, I showed that video to a friend of mine. Huh? And he, as soon as he's seen that building, he goes, I know where those buildings are. Ah! How speaking of this? Yeah. And I was like, you what? And he was like, well, I can't give you too much information, but a mate of mine's mother works for MI5, MI6 or something. Wow. Right? And when his mate got married, they all went on holiday. And it was paid for. It was all paid for by his his mate's parents. Um, and they were uh, obviously she devolved some information that she she told him she was allowed to tell him, and she said on the north coast of north easternish coast of Scotland, but more north, there's three or four, five of these buildings. Wow. That are actually the main connection, secure link for for the government and all the you know intelligence services between America and Britain. Wow! And the exactly same buildings as what that guy built for the time travel machine thing. I wonder if it's the area where you know the the in World War Two there was a secret camp and they all did something up there. Gosh, there's a whole book written about it. Mate, they're right on the coast. My yeah. mate he pulled it up on Google and showed me where they were. Wow. And, and he then, goes, there they are. And then, and then just to speak of that buildings that, that, that we're talking about, that, that was on the uh, in America in the big Apple <laughs> airport. And the, the building itself was meant to be a helping tool for meditation, a timeless state, a youth rejuvenation tool. Yeah, um, shaped like an egg. Sh- yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, absolutely it, amazing. It, it, Basically, it's only gravity that makes us age. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course, gravity is part of the toroidal itself. It's it's mm. it's the piece that's, uh, I think, taking all the elements to a physic. Well, you look at um, well, you look at the experiment NASA was meant to done with the twins. No. One one stayed in space for twelve months, oh, and yes. the other one stayed on Earth. And the one in space DNA doesn't match the one on Earth anymore because it spent too much time in space. Ah, uh, crazy. So what does that say? We, is, so his other twin is actually 12 months older now than he is. <laughs> maybe he didn't age as much up there. <laughs> well, what is it? The, 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 I, I, I'm not a believer in the, the, the space in the same way that people see space, but um, the, they say that the ISS is 27 hours a day instead of us here at 24 hours. And, you know, if you take the lunar um, aspects, the moon, what is it, 34 hours a day that it's for our 24 hour day or something yeah like 37.5 or something i can't remember yeah. exactly but yeah as, as, as the space dilation occurs there's so much so and I, th- I think that's one of the reasons in my book i spoke about the timeless state because if we start to see earth as the hologram the further we get from the apple the eye you know this this round this plane the further we get to timelessness and um gosh that's making me think of the music guru guy and uh, the the line that he says, they want us to think that we came from a cosmic fart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this is what I, I say. I say to my mates. I say, look, they tell us that the universe was created with a big bang. I said, you don't throw a fucking bomb into a hangar and a plane ex- appears. So this doesn't work like that. I said, all right, it's a little bit more complicated. You know, there's reaction. They say there's this reaction and that and this, but it's too perfect be something so accidental bollocks yeah. it's crazy mm. and, it, and if only and, and this is what gets me why we're not taught about the Fibonacci and the golden ratio that gives us pi that then gives us atoms and fucking atoms that, may, uh, that, tell, that what apply to everything that we know to be real 
or not even not not what we can see even as well yet we're not even told those three simple things steps and they're not like when i learned that when i've come across it i was like why the hell when i taught this in infant school yeah yeah i would i thought to myself if i was taught this in infant school i'd be um by the time you get to high school you'd be onto like quantum mechanics yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you would probably find that children are growing up as physicists. Yeah. And uh, just sees the whole realm and turns it, you know? Yeah. And they'd look at everything and see that this code, this equation, this creation, it, you'd see it everywhere. And you, you just picture know, it like I, the, the, yeah. the Matrix movie, all the Neos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because like I, as soon as I learned it, when I go walk the dog and stuff, everything I was looking at, I was like, "Wow, there it is! Oh, there it is!" Applied like I watched a, a, a buzzard fly over. There it is. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I look, I look at the stream running past. There it is. <laughs> I know it's crazy. You, you, a, a flower. There it is. A bug. There it is. <laughs> one of the pieces I put in my book was specifically on why people see these kind of things. And, you know, one of the thoughts that crossed my mind is there has to be a veil that people can comprehend. Um, So I wrote about what I think a veil was, and then I wrote about how I've perceived what each veil might be and how that they may uh, imagine such thing. And one of the thoughts that came, and I'm taking it from the bottom veil up the way now, so I'm thinking physical plane all the way to timeless state. But one of the first thoughts I had was synchronicities as a way of saying to people, oi, there's more to it than you know. And then the next layer, the next veil, is actually what you just mentioned, that sacred geometry, the pi. And I called that layer the footprint. And in that, and I could read you the paragraph if you wanted, but uh, in that, uh, I say paragraph, but in that chapter, in there, I, I explain to people how that when you're aware of these things, that's a confirmation you've penetrated the veil of a level of conscious awareness. So I call it the second veil. Mm. It's interesting. I, I can read a piece to you if you want. Yeah, if you want. Yeah, give me a second. Give me a second. Um, right, so footprint. An expanded awareness of our abilities to create, to recognize sacred geometry is an amazing perception. It is a validation of a state of conscious awareness, a state in which the individual gains the mindset, awareness of our true level of reality. The extent of this veil has a level of oneness with the divine where the ever unfolding quest can begin to share the wonders of the unfolding event horizon. The happening, just like the Mandelbrot set, as we see from the mathematics, the question, the equation set, can be applied to and is part of this veil. However, with the inner work to expand the awareness, we are capable of, we allow the equation set to be applied to our consciousness of the divine. And at that level of individual experience, we can then allow the source to unfold itself to each and every one of you as you experience the individual soul experience. The footprint of our realm was also portrayed in the movie Matrix. When Neo starts to see the true code behind the realm, the same can be said with sacred geometry because regardless of the shape, we find that it can be found in all things. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Which is true, you it's know. Just, yeah, it's just obviously people. Uh, I, like I don't mean to tar everybody with the same brush, but because of the way the education system is and the way we we live, we like we live this complicated load of BS that people don't don't see the multiple meanings behind the what's being said. Like there's there's a loss of philosophy from people. Truly. There's no, you yeah. know. And this is why I thought to write about the layers because I thought these uh, anybody reading it they would be able to then go, hey, I recognise that, so I'm gaining this awareness. And then for others that might have had an awareness and thought, well, why why am I seeing it? What's the point? Then it can be more confirmational for them. 
And I think that's why I, I, I wrote it. And then just to skim a little bit for you, I wrote the, the veils. I, I spoke about it from the bottom top. So you get the physical plane, which is your observational post, then synchronicities, footprints, the mastery of consciousness itself, obviously conscious grouping above mastery, and then heading towards the oneness state, you get the super sensible knowledge, which is definitely not common sense. It's the Rudolf Steiner's perspective type people. And then above that, you then get the division by love. And love creates all things. And if you have love with will, it manifests. So that's another veil. And then the, the closing veil is the timeless state of bliss. That one memory that never changes. That one consciousness that's pure. Mm. And that's well, how I got it. That's, that's as far as I got. I, I didn't feel like there was other stuff. Well, this is where it's been lost over the past 50, 60 years. Definitely. That kind of... Um, like, I was, thinking, I, I, was thinking, I was thinking about this the other day, but I can't quite remember how I, I, I thought of it now, to word it properly. That, like, it's like... Um, yeah, you know, when you, feel, when you fall in love with someone, you're, it's, it's a hell, it's like once, once you break your heart, there's no fucking going back. Yes. So this is where people have lost this, like, from years ago, where you would do your court in, you would be, you know, there was kind of like a, there was a structure and a direction with it to make sure that, that you didn't take that risk. Yes, yeah. It's like losing a tooth; you can never put it back. Yeah, because because I I like from but well, we've all experienced it. Like I've been in love a couple times, and the last time I was in love, it's it. I'm like, phew, like it it is it completely drained me. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, I don't know whether I could ever go back there again. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it takes on a very special. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think as well, that's why um, a lot of the Kriya Yoga works well, because we can um, allow ourselves to love ourselves emptylessly, and not in the way that we are egoically in love with self. And I think when we find that, nothing can ever drain us. Yeah. It's, it's, it's also like a very dangerous and powerful thing. Like they say, it's, love is the most powerful thing. But when if it's applied wrong, it can be extremely devastating. Yeah, and that's well, kind of like what I was trying to say then. That it's come to be a bit more now. It's like you look at World War Two, for instance, where the Germans had their love for their nation, that the British had their love and their nation, and for the way their cultures were and for the way they thought and everything. And look at the destruction and devastation from looking at it from the point of the love for their fellow countrymen and their nation to the to the, to the lengths that they went to and the and the you know yeah it's, it, it's obviously like it won't just, without will it's it's yeah because like, it, it wasn't just pure evil that nope. drove everything yeah it was all in love that that that's the ironic thing, and and I I I I feel this is why I was driven to write this one book is because each of us hold this perspective view, and you know like there's you speaking about the national view, they were in love with the moment, and the outcome was interesting, and even Britain they were in love with the moment, and you know even though there's so much darkness within it, there was love there, but the will of its love was not there. So thus, it was a destructive act. And it reminds me what um, Isaac Bentov says in his book, I think it's him, that he speaks of the conscious implications. We, love is bliss, it is the oneness. And to take that to creation, manifestation, it needs to be wilt from love. When it's inverted, when it's will toward love, it's destructive. And he wrote that in his book. And that's the 70s, I think he wrote that. Yeah, misguided, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think this is what we're perhaps seeing evolve right now. And I think because of the things that Steiner and those schools spoke about, the Armin, I think that will challenge us to perceive it differently. 
and I, I'm going to guess here, but I hope that the majority of Wakeners start to see the same type of view, and this might help them progress in an inspirational way to help others, you know, and I, and I, I don't mean to go off all Bible revelationary, but there's a, a lot of people speaking about how the, we're at Revelation 13 right now, and a bit of this, a bit of that, and um, I can't help but think that's a mystery school's wish list. And frankly, if people would take the whole view back, they might start to perceive the humblistic act of what's written in that esoteric book. Because let's face it, it's truly an esoteric book. Interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really pumped for this year. And uh, today's uh, short video was just a little snippet sharing some stuff. So it's... Uh, Share that energies, man. <laughs>